You are now listening to the Curtis King Podcast. Music producers, welcome to the Curtis King Podcast. If this is your first time listening, this is a podcast for music producers, but broadly for thinkers and creatives alike with an emphasis on mental health. If this is your first time listening, we want to just say thank you for listening to us on the traditional platforms, whether it be Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts. We want to say thank you for listening. If you are interested in watching the video of this, which today will probably play a better or bigger role, then you want to come over here to the YouTube channel, the Curtis King TV YouTube channel, and come check us out. Come join the community, chop it up with them, see what everybody's talking about on this side. But that being said, Today's episode, just like all episodes, I guess, is a bit slightly different in that usually I like to piece together topics that are broadly affecting the entire producer community in some shape or form. And we'll get back to that very soon. But this week, I got to just I got to tell the story of how we got to this point of my first ever plug in being released to the public now. At the recording of this and at the release of this, that plugin is not available to the public quite yet. Well, unless you count yourself as the public, I feel like you guys are the insiders. You already on the inside of things. So before we get started, I just want to let you know that by listening to this podcast, you're going to get a link, a special link that only you have access to. And uh, yeah, whether you're a Mac or you're a PC user. Our Windows user, you're going to have access to that before everybody else does. We're in the very early stages in terms of getting that out to the public and you will be the first one. So that's my thank you for listening to the podcast. You got to be some kind of a diehard to listen to these podcasts that at times can be a bit long winded. They're always long winded, (laughs) but nonetheless, you are appreciated. And I wanted to make sure I showed my appreciation to you in this way. That being said, how did I even get? to this point of creating a plugin and putting it out. Well, I got to say creating a plugin has been on my mind for some years now. It has been something that I always saw it as a extension of my creative process that I could share with my peers. So instead of, you know, because usually my YouTube videos, I guess, are an extension of my my perspective in my mind and how I approach music and I share ideas of how I approach my career and that becomes an extension. But I always saw plugins as another level, another extension of who you are, first and foremost, as a producer, but also sort of how you approach things. And so I had these ideas in my mind, and I'm sure that you've had ideas before if you haven't created a plugin at this point. But, you know, years ago when I had the idea, there weren't too many resources out there, at least the ones that, you know, I was looking for. I didn't see too many resources that were geared specifically to music producers who aspire to want to create their own plugins. Even though there were producers at that time that were creating their own plugins and their own presets and uh, contact libraries and things like that. First one that comes to mind is Superstar O. And uh, it's it's always super dope from a producer's perspective to see a producer get into that world, because although they may not be a programmer, right, Uh, uh, a GUI UI designer by trade they still know their craft and they know what things they like about certain plugins and what things they don't like. So it was always dope to see it happen so that at least let me know, you know, without having sometimes contact with some of these folks that had plugins, it was possible. And so I scoured the internet. I remember looking up at a a website called Upwork and looking through, uh, you know, the numerous people who were doing, you know, some kind of coding And I didn't find any specifically for what I wanted to accomplish. And it was all for a good reason, because I don't think that I really had a a good sense of what makes a great plug in. And I mean, I'm still still I'm think I'm still figuring it out. But uh, I do believe that. 
my experience has played an advantage when it comes to these plugins that I have for you. Yes, multiple plugins. I just got to say, you know, you 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 put ideas out there into the into into the the universe, right? Whoever you pray to. Uh, I prayed to God and I was like, yo, I, I, I want to create plugins. I want to, I want to figure out ways to simulate what it is that I do with my drums and give that packaged up, um, as something that another producer can use instead of relying upon tutorial after tutorial, where well, you'd have it right then and there. That was the first idea I had running, but as I've done all the mentoring that I've done in my private community, uh, we had when we had Curtis King University, um, I learned so much about producer workflows. I learned so much about what it is that frustrates a producer, as well as my own experience for myself. But I got to really see through doing my 10 minute beat drills, which you guys have heard me speak about many of times here on this channel. But through those 10 minute beat drills, I started noticing that there was some things that I was teaching the producers to get a better experience and better beat out of their 10 minute drill. And there were certain things that were just technology shortcomings, not on their part, not it doesn't matter if they have a fast computer or not. It was a matter of workflow. And so I had it in my mind. I was like, there's got to be a way that these producers cannot have to use Google or open up the browser and have that there while working on a beat. There's got to be a way to do this all internally. And so I'm fast forwarding a little bit. Let me rewind a little bit more. So I had the idea years ago to get, get into the plugin game. Uh, we've seen many of folks come through here that have killed it. I mean, you know, first person that comes to mind, Cal Beats, shout out to him and really killing it with this drip plugin and um, just being uh, a very present face and a very present voice uh, in, in, in probably in your advertisement feed. And that just shows you how much he's dedicated and how much he believes in his plugin, because you obviously saw that over and over and over again. So nothing but props to him for creating that and doing what he did. But in, 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 in seeing years before that even came out, how challenging it was, it just kind of became one of those things that was like Curtis King plug in. It's not that it's not going to happen. It's just not right now. And there's a lot of ideas that I had to say not right now, too, because if you leave it up to me. I'll go. <laughs> I'm so DIY that I'd go look at look up some Udemy courses of how to create this stuff and how to code this stuff. Even if it's not a passion of mine, it's a passion of mine always to see my goals be accomplished. It's always a passion of mine to see things all the way to the end of their destination, right? And if I want to get something accomplished, a timer goes off, a literal timer. No, no pun intended. A timer goes off that says, I need to get this done. I will do it by any means necessary. And this is one of the things where I was like, I am definitely in over my head, right? I could teach myself Photoshop. I could teach myself how to video edit. I could teach myself how to graphic design. I could teach myself all these things that I'm not perfect at by any means. Um, but this is one of those things where I was like, it's too elusive. And so I kind of just sat it in the back of my mind. And even it's funny, me and Ogosh were talking about the idea of doing plugins when we were starting to figure out ways to expand out Slap Experts, which is obviously a sound design company that I co-own with him. And uh, we had a few different ideas that came to mind. And it's just one of the things where it's like, yo, I, how do we do it, though? How do we do it? But I prayed about it and I felt like it wasn't about my timing. It was about God's timing. And I feel like God's timing led uh, a, a gentleman named Lee that uh, DM, not DM me, but sent me an email, random email. I'll never forget it. Sent me an email. And um, he already has a plug-in company called the Loop Chip. And the plugins looked fire, right? He sent me an email basically saying, hey, 
I think that you and I can make something really special on the plug-in end. Let me know if you're even even thinking in that mindset and if you would be interested in getting down with that. And I'm like, first of all, this is too good to be true. Because usually when I get those messages inside of my email, it's somebody like it's it's somebody who's posing as something they're not quite right. It's somebody who's doing some kind of spammery. It's somebody who is using a copy and paste message to send to everybody spamming, trying to get somebody to pay them money. And uh, at first I was a little skeptical. I was like, nah, but so I don't know, man. I don't know what this is. I don't know if you're just trying to sell me on, you know what I mean? You're just trying to get some money off of me. Um, but I could not be any further. That could not be any further from the truth. Uh, an, an awesome individual. Uh, his brother's based in the UK and he's super, super talented at what he does. And so he sent me some links. I checked them out. Checked out his work that he did with plugins, and I was like, yo, not only is this fire, and not only do I believe all the stuff that is being shared with me, but this is like so in line with my brand. It's colorful. The plugins you were created were colorful. Um, he even sent me some some uh, you know, some some free downloads to check the functionality of it. And that was a big deal to me too, is that if I'm going to make a plugin. I know that no matter what you do plugin wise, you're going to run into errors, right? Some of you are going to download this and you're going to find some unique things, some bugs. That's why they have updates, right? That's why you're, that's why even your television has firmware updates because things happen where the manufacturer says, okay, we got to go back to the drawing board and fix this issue that's been presented to us. Um, I, you know, I, I wasn't worried about that, but my thing was, I want to make sure that the functionality is not something that hinders the creative process. And so after doing my research, me and Lee went back and forth. We were exchanging ideas and, you know, I told him some of the ideas that I had that were just bubbling in my mind for years. And there was a few of them that we started to launch on first, but then one of them in particular started to take fire even faster than the rest of them. And we have like, I think at the recording of this six plugins, six or seven ready to go. Um, well, almost ready to go, I should say. But the first one out the gate, the first one out the gate is the one that took off uh, beyond all the other ideas. And um, it's called the beat timer. Let me explain what the beat timer is. The beat timer is a workflow plugin. Unlike anything else that you've seen when it comes to this generation of music producers that utilize plugins within their DAW. It is able to be used on every DAW except for Pro Tools. We're still working on getting some things right with that. But as of today, it is available for every DAW imaginable outside of Pro Tools. And it is a productivity plugin that has a few different functions. The first function addresses the issue that I talked about a little bit earlier, where producers were doing these 10 minute beat challenges. And there was this stress about, first of all, the distraction of having to open up a browser and use Google for their clock, right? Or their timer. Uh, if they weren't doing that, it was the distraction of their phone, which if you're looking at the timer, but then you see a notification that pops up. It defeats the purpose of this being a productivity hack in terms of the 10 minute beat challenge. The 10 minute beat challenge is supposed to be you putting yourself in a stress situation so that you can hyper focus and emulate in a very small scale what it's like to be in your flow state. Emulate what it's like to move without thinking as you should be in your creative process. But you get you get the timer off for Google. You're distracted by pop ups. So even if you have a pop up block, you're distracted by it's on another window. So instead of being able to click within your DAW and see where your timer's at, you got to click off the window. So then from there, even with your with your phone, like I said, you get the distractions of the notifications. What if you take the notifications off? Well, that's fine, but you're still looking at your phone, which for most producers is the biggest distraction of them all when it comes to staying productive and making music. So an idea came to me 
to first at first just create a timer, a beat timer, put it out there for free, which, by the way, if you didn't know this beat timer that I'm talking about, which is the first plug in by us, is absolutely free. Um, that's the first function of it. OK, it was a beat timer. You can literally start it off at whatever 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes and count down. Or you can have it to where it tracks the amount of time that you're working on a beat. Now, FL Studio has something similar to this in terms of it tells you your project time. Only issue with that is that it doesn't necessarily tell you your idle time. So those times where you may be working on a beat and then you walked away and made some food, but you kept FL Studio open, that clock's still ticking. But now you have the same control you would have over your phone timer, over your Google timer, or whatever it is you use internally as a plugin within your uh, within the beat timer plugin. So that was the first step of it. And as he was sending me drafts, uh, and they were looking really, really fire, looking beautiful. I was like, man, you better you better hope I don't leak this myself. <laughs> um, it was looking fire. It was looking crazy. But then something else told me I was like, but I feel like this can serve another purpose. So after going back and forth and he was cold and like a madman, he was cold and crazy. His work ethic is amazing. It's just like like it's just the same thing that I, I approach my 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 music and business as I like to just get to it and let's work out the errors, you know, later and figure it out. But he uh, sent me drafts and I started thinking of more ideas and I was like, yo. What if in addition to this timer, it also tallied the amount of days that you jumped into your DAW consecutively and it posed as a reward system for you coming back to your DAW? What if in addition to that, the beat timer can not only tally the consecutive amount of days that you've come to making beats, which if you don't know, when your brain is given some kind of reward, sometimes it doesn't even matter how big the reward is for accomplishment, for staying consistent. Well, that's the way that you stay consistent. You got to give some kind of reward to your brain for doing what it did. So it has incentive to want to go back. So that being said, I was like, well. How about we address producers that not only do 10 minute beat challenges or time their progress, but also producers who do. 30 day beat challenges, 15 day beat challenges, 60 day beat challenges. Right. So I don't know if we did 60 quite yet, but now we did 30 as a max. Um, this now this beat timer now serves an additional feature that allows you to. Basically allow that plug in as long as you're coming and logging back in with the plug in. So you could even add it to your template on whatever DAW that you use and have it open up as the first plugin that opens up on your computer or on your DAW when you open it up. And once you open up that plugin, it tallies the day for you. So it tracks you and it tells you how far along you are if you're doing a 30 day beat challenge, because not everybody that does a 30 day beat challenge does it for the gram or does it for social media. Some people just do it for themselves. And although you can sit there and look at what day and do some research, what if you had a plugin that allowed you to do that all within the same beat timer plugin? And I'm proud to say that through some trial and error, Lee accomplished it and got it done. So now we have a plugin that serves as a timer, right? Serves as a timer that counts up and counts down also checks into your consecutive days that you've been making beats, because if you see a streak going, you want to keep it going. So it's going to incentivize you to make beats on a more consistent basis. Even if it's for a few minutes, you're going to want to get back in there. Um, and then on top of that. There is a feature that helps you to track your 30 day beat challenges or your seven day or whatever you choose to do now. It gets better. In addition to tracking, if you do a 30 day beat challenge, this plugin will also give you rewards when you reach certain checkpoints and milestones. After the first seven days, you're going to get a free download, a sound pack from Slap Experts that has been unreleased to the public. 
first of all, you get incentivized to do what you already should be doing, which is working on beats daily. Next, 15 days, you'll get another reward. I'm not going to quite tell you what that is. I want to kind of leave a little surprise for you. And then on the 30th day, for those of you that go 30 days in a row, you will get a coupon code, a significant discount on the plugin that is to come right after this one, which is called Tape Boy. That's the one I think many of you are really looking forward to. And uh, we'll have more information on that soon. We want to make sure that we learn from this launch how to, you know, kind of alleviate some of the errors and issues that may arise. So that is that. We even got some more upgrades that I don't want to let all the, the I don't want to let it all out the bag for Beat Timer, but Beat Timer is available now. So if you go to Beat Timer, one T, Curtis, what is it with you with you in letters? Curtis with two S's, but this Beat Timer with one T. Yes. Beat Timer with one T because the T is shared by Beat and Timer. It should just pop up right here. BeatTimer.com will send you to a landing page. That is not quite public for the public, but is public for those unlisted for those of you who are watching this podcast. So if you go to beat timer, B-E-A-T-I-M-E-R dot com, that will lead you to the landing page where you'll be able to download the beat timer for free. Whether you use Mac or whether you use Windows, it is available for you no matter what dial you're using outside of Pro Tools. So. That is, in a nutshell, the story. But I, I would feel, I would feel like a complete jerk to not insert this other part of the story because what he did to the design of the plugin, the design, this plugin is so beautiful. This plugin is so colorful. It is so Curtis King, right, Mister uh, uh, Avatar on YouTube, and this would not have been possible for it to look as crazy as it does without the homie Nicholas Gray. Nicholas Gray, if you don't know, one of the most talented individuals, uh, singer, songwriter, rapper, producer, amazing graphic designer. Um, I'm sure I'm missing something in this, but he and I worked together on a song called C'est La Vie that I released a video, I think on this channel for a project I had called Somersault. And uh, he sings on that hook. He's just, and he did, and he did the cover art for the album. So in the midst of us finalizing the ideas with this plugin, Lee and I, another idea came to me. I said, I think that if we align with someone like the homie Nicholas Gray, if he has time, I think he can take this plugin from a vision because that's really when you look at plugins now. You cannot ignore the visual aspect of the plugin. That's what makes them appealing. That's not only what makes them appealing, but what makes them memorable and makes you say, hey, I need to go open up that plug and I haven't used it in a second. Right. Think about the ones that instantly just pop at you. I hate to say pop at you and then follow this up with sausage fattener, but damn it, that pops at you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> from the title to the to, to the interface, it pops at you, right? Um, no different than the drip plugin, no different with that. These plugins just mm, have that 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 splatter effect, that in your face, that ah, I'm using that, oh, that's crazy. Uh, to a certain degree, I feel like RC twenty has that as well. Uh, but those are my favorite plugins or the ones that I, I, I instantly remember endless smiles. Another one I endless. I just, I instantly remember it and it makes me want to use it more because of how it looks. And so I pose the idea to Lee because I know how, uh, uh, you know, folks who are programming and coding, how they can be, you know, about their, this, this is their baby as well. Right. This is, this is, he was cool as can be and was like, man, bring him in. If he's down, I, I can give him all the specs and we'll figure it out. And, my man's went in. My man's killed the design of this plug-in. And um, you know, we we, you know, we get we had our we got we still got our weekly meetings. Had our weekly meetings. And um, damn it, we put this thing together and it is finally here for you. And uh, I, I really just want to see how you guys utilize it. So if you plan on using it, first and foremost, uh leave some comments and leave a comment below. Let me know that you're gonna use it and that you got it. But in addition to that, I want you to share it, share it with 
social media so that I can share it on my social media. Right. So if you're working on a beat, are you getting ready to work on a beat and you throw the beat timer up there? Screenshot it or do a video, IG story, I whatever you want to do. Just tag me in it. I'm giving you full permission to tag me in the post. I want to see you utilize this plugin and I want to see and hear your thoughts on the plugin. We are still, like I said, we this is this is a a very new venture for me. And I think on the last half of this podcast, we're going to talk about why it's so important for producers like myself to to start to get into this realm. There's another feature about it that I actually forgot to mention that you're going to see upon getting in there. By having this beat timer, you are going to forever be locked into whatever updates that we have before the general public. If you're using this plugin, you will have, it's almost like when you go to FL Studio and they have their news ticker at the top and it tells you, hey, there's a new version of FL Studio. We got this thing here, but it's serving a few different purposes. One purpose is to give you daily perspiration delivered specifically from me. Uh, so you get, of course, an extension of my brand, which is inspiration. And in addition to that, you'll also have these mail icon messages that'll pop up. Boop, boop. You've got mail. It'll pop up and let you know when a free download is available or an upgrade is available. All that good stuff. Uh, it'll just be able to keep in touch with you and let you know what's going on. Um, and then also, too, there will be some some additional information in case, you know, some of you are dealing with some issues. We have a way to communicate with you, but then also keep you up to date when new things are dropping. I, I just it, it's as I'm saying these words, it's blowing my mind because it tells me like, look, it really came. It really happened. It's really here. And we're just getting started. So have fun with that. I want to end this podcast, though, on a perspective that I think that even if you're not prepared for today, you should give some thought to at some point in your career. A lot of you are just getting started in your career. Don't even trip on this. Or maybe you are ready for this. And then some of you are in another lane where you're like, "Eh, I don't really want to get into this here. Look, 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 I hear you. I hear you. I did not see myself getting into this realm, especially after seeing how challenging it was to align with somebody who who did things. And I'm not one to go like, you know, like I wouldn't hit up the homie Kyle like, yo, hey, bro, who your designer, bro? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, let me let me get it. You know what I'm saying? Let me let me see what's up, bro. I'm trying to get a plug here like that. Like, I I wouldn't do them like that because I'm sure he had to do his work to find whoever he, he whoever, whoever it is that he worked with. Um, same thing with Cymatics. Shout out. I forgot to mention them. Shout out to Cymatics and them doing uh, everything they're doing with Diablo. And so with these producers that are taking on this, um, and, and I also feel like even though I don't agree with him and, 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 and for, for good reason and everything that he, his whole get down, I think that, Still respect is due to a busy works beats for the plugin that he created. So now as I'm in this phase of creating plugins, it's starting to dawn upon me that I have been creating plugins without even knowing it by making comments about the plugins that I'm currently using. I would say things like, I like this tape emulator, but I wish it had this particular feature. I like this, but I wish it also had this. So instead of me being one of those customers that send in ideas for free and, you know, there's no compensation for it, why don't I just create these ideas? Why don't I allow myself to really test it out? And then also, too, you know, this is giving me even more respect for the programmers and those that create these things because it's not easy. It's a tedious process. I can tell it's not easy because I wasn't even hands on with the coding and it was still a bit of a challenge for me to really figure out how to approach this in a way that makes it memorable, that makes it stick. But then also something that works from a, like really, really serves a purpose that is intended for it. That's important to me. It's more than just getting a plug in and saying, hey, I got a plug in. It's more than that. 
For me, it's making sure that it's something that can actually help people. That is no different from any videos that I do. If it cannot help you, I don't even want to sit down and make the content just for views. It's not it doesn't serve me any purpose. I'm just wasting time and air. So seeing that as it is, uh, it's it's important. It's important that more plugins are created by producers. I think that there are so many things that we have asked for from developers and they, you know, for those out there who are killing it, that are listening to the producers, shouts to them by no means are folks like us looking to replace them. But I do think that it is time. It is time and not saying that we're the first ones to do it, but in our specific space, hip hop in, in this space, in this era of, of hip hop in this era of, um, of, of the online music producer. It is time. It's been time. Folks have already activated. I'm, I'm late to the party, but it's time. It's necessary. It's needed. We need to be able to not only add our voice in this space, but we also need to be in ownership of these things. We also need to be able to have these ideas that would otherwise lie dormant or be free additions for another plugin that we don't have any equity in. It's time for us to launch these. It's time for us to make the errors. It's time for us to have the, 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 the setbacks that come along with it. It's time for us to bet it on ourselves. It's time for us to do it in a way that leads the plugin companies or the developers that we respect so much to say, well, now we have to add new things to what we're doing because there's producers that are serving a direct necessity and need because they have a direct connection to the very art that they're creating plugins for. And so this is a reason also, too, that I never want to stop making music, especially as I'm starting to get and develop these plugins um, with Lee and, and Nicholas Gray. I, I, I want to make sure that these are things that I actually have a need for and that there's a void for and not just sit up here just making them just to look cool and throw those things out there. These are plugins that if none of y'all use them, you better for sure believe I'm finna use them. Every single one of them. And, and that's worst case scenario that nobody else needs them except for me. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think that I have been tapped in with this community of producers, this wide ranging variety community of producers long enough to know what what segments of you need and what you have told me that you need. And I know what I need. And so there's a necessity for us to get into this realm and stay in this realm and not even just get into the game and do it. Dominate it. Dominate it. I don't want to come into this space and emulate my favorite plugins. I want to come into this space and inspire my favorite plugin developers. I want to get in this space and have my favorite plugin developers say, damn, I never thought about that. Or damn, how they do that? That's that's the energy I'm coming from. This ain't about outdoing nobody. This ain't about, oh, I'm finna, I'm finna be the next. No, I don't care about none of that. I want to bring something fresh, something new. And my strategy with that has always been do what's authentic first. Speak on what's already on your mind and heavy on your heart and what affects you as a producer and figure out, first of all, who's serving the purpose of fulfilling those voids or filling those voids. And if they're not serving it, why is it underserved? What are the limitations to serve that? And then also aligning with people. That can be 100 percent at the very things that you don't have the knowledge, ability or time to be 100 percent at. It's synergy. It's 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 the benefit of a team. And so between Nick, um, between Lee, I'm really excited for this beat timer to get out to you. I'm really excited about Tape Boy that's coming on after that. And then some other joints that if you've been in the live streams, you've seen previews of them. But it's out there. It's out there, and I'm excited that you guys are able to get your hands on it. 
If you have any questions, definitely email me at curtiskingtv at gmail.com. But the landing page should give you all the information that you need as you start to go there. And, and I just suggest that you get nosy, push some buttons, see what things do. We plan on reinvesting back into it and creating other ideas. Like I got ideas for like a chart system and all this crazy stuff to reward those of you that use it the most. So all I got to say is use it, stay consistent with it, have fun. Let us know what you think. But for the most part, let this inspire you to start thinking about the things that you currently do not think are possible for yourself. Because at one point in time, this very idea seemed very, very far fetched. In terms of who to work with to make it happen, seemed very, very far fetched. But the universe, God, whatever you believe in, works in a way that is always to your ultimate benefit. You do not get the things that you need when you think you need them, right? It is when I feel, in my opinion, when God feels that you're ready for them, when you are not only in a position to accomplish it, but to thrive at it, to dominate at it. And I truly believe that in my 36th year on this earth, my 20th, I guess, year as a producer, there could not have been a more perfect time for these ideas to appear in the ver it appear in there could not have been a better time for these ideas to appear in the form of plugins. So beattimer.com is where you go to B E A T I M E R. I hope you enjoy it. Let me know what you think. And uh, that's it. Music producers, thank you for watching the new episode of the Curtis King podcast that is unofficially, officially um, <laughs> sponsored by the Curtis King plugin, Beat Timer. Hey, let's go, let's go, let's go. Presented by Slap Experts, none other than I couldn't be. I'm, I'm, I'm literally at, at, a, at a loss of words. My thoughts have been all over the place because I'm thinking about what needs to be done in preparation to get this to you in a smooth way. But nonetheless, I'm excited that it's out there. I'm excited about what is to come. Producers, stay inspired. Stay, if you're not going to physically launch on the idea, at least write it down. Because you can always come back to these ideas that you write down. These plugins I'm launching on now, ideas that I scribbled little fragments of. And now here we are. Thank you for watching today's episode of the Curtis King podcast. If you are listening on the traditional podcast platforms, please make sure that you go and give this a five star rating. Leave a comment. Let the people know that this is a very cool place and safe space to go over to. For those of you that are watching this on YouTube. Hey, you know what to do. Hit the like button. Subscribe. If you're not subscribed, leave a comment and whatever that is. For those of you that I'm sure are going to be saying congratulations, I thank you thoroughly. I thank you so much for supporting me and supporting this channel, supporting us and the team and what we did for this. I, I can't believe it's out there, but it is out there. In this life, you would not be full of life. And so you decide to live life to its fullest. Once again, it's Curtis King of the Curtis King Podcast. Have a good one.